Greetings, this is Sean, and today I'm going to be making this uh, hand crank lathe. This is going to be the first of two parts for this one. The second part will have the actual big wheel that will be turned to make this one turn. It'll be a semi-functional piece, so sit back and relax and enjoy. I'm starting off in the shop. I've got a few pieces I haven't, I'm going to use my scroll saw to cut out uh, just because I wanted to change a pace, something different to do. And uh, originally I was going to make this a one inch wide piece, but I decided to make it, you know, according to the plans, and make it a three quarter inch piece and wide piece instead. So that's what the extra set of lines you see here is. And so, anyway, I'm just, uh, like I said, cutting this out and. Uh, would have been a lot easier to do but my tripod that holds my camera is sitting right in front of me so I had to kind of change the way I normally do this but it works out I was going to the square that's in the middle there I was going to cut this but I forgot to drill the holes and I just decided uh, later on as you'll see I'm gonna chisel those out instead so that's what the little squares will are, are for. And this piece here that I'm cutting out is the tailstock that'll hold the the dead center that's on the right hand side of the lathe. And it will actually be adjustable to where I can move it across the, the table. It was supposed to be round, but it's not the easiest thing to do, so... Anyway, uh, here I am. I'm just going to drill the hole. That's where the uh, the live center will be, where the pulley the, you know, will uh, actually do the turning. And I'm just reaming out the holes to make sure that they're nice and clean. And here I am. I'm just kind of cleaning up a little bit. You know, it was a little bit uneven when I when I got done cutting, so I'm just kind of evening things out a little bit with the chisels, and then I'll chisel out the holes like I mentioned before. And yes, it looks like I'm missing the lines, but I actually made the the holes the wrong size when I drew the pattern, so I had to make them a little bit bigger. And this is the other piece. Don't know what I'm debating on right there. I may have been talking to my wife, but anyway, <laughs> I don't remember.
no, that wasn't an oopsie. I just thought it looked cool, slow motion. Anyway. <laughs> I did have one oopsie this time, and it's it'll come later, but uh, I, I, you really don't notice it, but I'll point it out when I get there. It's with these pieces here. Um, these are the uh, feet, the, the parts that stand on the floor. And, uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to figure out, I need a 3 8 inch by quarter inch hole in the center of that piece. And so I'm measuring it, and it's supposed to be 1 and 3 quarters inches wide, which it that one was, but the first one was a little bit smaller, so I'm going to have to adjust it to the size that it need, that, of the smaller one. I wasn't going to cut another piece of wood, so I just made the bigger one a little bit smaller. By a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, I know, I'm being critical, but anyway. So I'm, here I am just chiseling off the end of the long piece. So now they'll both be one and eleven sixteen or uh, yeah one and eleven sixteenths inches or whatever it was I don't remember eleven sixteenths yeah. So now what I'm doing is I'm trying I'm finding the halfway mark by uh, doing that I take the three eighths of an inch off of the inch and three quarters and anyway. Here I am, just, and they end up being off. <laughs> off. That one's that one's bigger than that one. I don't know how I goofed, but anyway, uh, what I end up doing is cutting out the bigger one, which I should have cut out the smaller one, but I cut out the bigger one first, which ended up being too big for the piece of wood that actually goes in it. And then I'll just go through that hole once I chisel it out. And there's the if you look real close, you can see a crack. I cracked that one as I was as I was trying to chisel, I pushed too hard. And uh, anyway, um, uh, what was I saying? It, it's too big for the piece of wood that actually goes down into that piece, so anyway. There. I should have used the smaller one and filed it to fit, but anyway, it, it's not that far off. And, close enough. I end up having to super glue this one anyway because of the crack that's in it, which you can see in the... See there. And then here I just line those two up and go down through it, which, like I said, I should have did the small one first, smaller hole first, but anyway, no big deal. Oh, by the way, I, did, I lost my uh, front view footage of this particular section, otherwise I would have been switching back and forth between it, so... For some reason, it shut off in the middle of recording and didn't get a chance to finalize when it was done, so I lost that footage. And some other footage that I lost. Um, the bars that go across, um, I didn't get those filmed uh, being cut, but they're just simple cuts, nothing major, uh, so I didn't really worry about doing that. And then I also, for some reason, did not record putting the uh, metal posts that you'll see for the pulley and, and for the live center, dead center, and all that. Um, I didn't get those filmed for some reason either. So anyway, I'm just giving it a quick sand.
Okay, now see the, the those two pieces there I didn't didn't show being cut, as well as the other square piece that you see there next to it. These are what go across the top of the lathe and what I'm doing here on this one is I'm going to be marking holes to drill for the tool rest to sit in. So uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm making them every quarter of an inch across there. And at first what I'm doing is I'm just marking every quarter inch and then I'll go back with down and then line up down the center and draw a line down the center of it and then I'll drill those with a 1 16th inch drill bit on my Dremel tool that you saw there. Yeah, they look crooked but I don't follow those whole lines or those dots. There's actually a line there. Oh, here it comes. That's right. I have done that yet. And some sad news, uh, my Dremel tool uh, bit the dust. It does not work anymore. After doing this project, I uh, broke it. Not purposefully, of course, but it was just one of those things that happens. So I have to get me a new Dremel tool. <laughs> anyway, I've had it for quite a while, so it, it, it lasted me a good time, a good long time. So. Okay, here I am putting it all together. This is just a dry fit to make sure everything fits together. And you can see there's some big gaps and whatnot. And I'm just checking to make sure what goes where and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so here I'm just taking some tacky glue and gluing it all together and getting the basic machine put together. Um, then after this, I'll do the polys and the dead center live centers. And I'm not going to finish this piece with stain or anything right now. Um, I think what I'm going to do is once I get the building built and get start putting things into it, um, then I'll start staining and weathering and doing that kind of thing with all of the pieces. Just so you know. And I did not realize that I have a piece of a stick thing of glue there on my fingertip, and now I've just stuck it down and I'm. I was saying to myself, where in the world did that glue come from? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I didn't realize I had it on the tip of my finger there. So anyway, that's going to slide back and forth. And I also didn't show, there's a, what I'll do is, I, I do is take a, a little chisel or a drill bit and uh, drill a hole through the bottom of that moving tail stock to uh, make a wedge. I'll show you that later. Anyway, here I am at the, le the my lathe in my shop again and I am uh, turning from a piece, I think it's a piece of oak, or it might even be just a broom handle, but um, a, the pulley that I'm gonna use for the live center.
I need to be about a quarter of an inch wide. So I'm just making some marks there. Okay, I'm making a little groove in the middle of it. sanding it to smooth it out a little bit. And my head's in the way. It's a little bit smaller than I wanted it to be, but it's alright. It wasn't off by much. Here I am just taking it apart. Taking off. Good thing about doing this is it leaves a mark there so I know where the center of it is later when I have to drill the hole through it. Which I could have drilled the hole through the center of it at, before I started cutting it, which I should have did, but it's alright, it worked. Leaves a nice little mark. Back to the desk. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm making the tool rest and I'm just taking, that's a 1 inch square dowel that I've kind of made into a little wedge so it would fit down into the hole. And then that's just another small piece of scrap wood that I've cut and a little angle at the top to make a little tool rest is all it is. And I'm debating what kind of glue I should use. And I decide to use super glue. Actually, I think what I was also doing was looking for a piece of styrofoam or something that I could set that in, but then I found this piece of wood that happened to have a drill, a hole drilled into it, so that's what I used. So, anyway, that's a little tool rest, real simple. See, and I didn't, like I said, the, the metal parts that you see there for the, the centers, they're it's a one one piece of uh, or one uh, nail. It's an eight penny nail, and I basically cut the tip off and used one end for the dead center, the sharpen point, and then the head of it was used for the pulley. And I just didn't show that part being done. I did have to put a little piece of brass uh, tubing in where the live center goes uh, because. Um, uh, it was too, the hole was too big and it was really loose. So, anyway, that worked out. And that little square piece of wood up there is just basically used to hold it in place while it's turning so that it doesn't move around. It's the easiest way I've found to do it. So, anyway, that's the hand crank lathe. I'm working on the big wheel this weekend, or next weekend, and uh, I'll have that up. Let me know what you think. And as always, have a better day, as I always say.